Hey everybody, welcome back. My name is Abby with Fitness is Medicine, and today I'm gonna to give you another great workout you can do in your home. What we're gonna need for equipment today is um, a couple sets of dumbbells, maybe one lighter, one heavier, and you're just gonna need one on the one set. And um, the ball that we played with last time, if you happen to have one of those or a smaller ball, something like that. And if you have a fit ball, if you don't have a fit ball, no problem, we can do these without. Um, but remember to come into these workouts warmed up and ready to go. So make sure you have moved for five to 10 minutes. You've gotten your heart rate up a little bit. You're starting to feel warm and you're ready to, for some exercise. Okay, so we're gonna start with some push-ups today. I know push-ups are really hard for a lot of people, but there are ways to modify them to make them doable. So I'm gonna show you today two modifications. If you can do push-ups on the ground, go for it. And I want you to start that whenever you're ready. Um, if you have a coffee table or a kitchen chair, this is a great way to do push-ups. The key here though, that I see people making lots of mistakes is when they try to do them against, um, you know, like a chair or a bench, they tend to be back here. And so their shoulders are not over their hands. You want your shoulders over your hands still, just like if you were on the floor. So that when you lower, you're lowering your chest to the bench or the chair, whatever you happen to be using. Because if you're back here and trying to do them, it's extra hard. It's, an, it's a harder way to do a push-up, but it can also be hard on your, on your shoulders. You wanna keep your head in line with your spine, no dipping your head. And think about pulling up with your core, with your abs. I'm gonna move this up. Another way you can do it is using a countertop or a wall. I'm going to show you on my treadmill, but you can do it against a counter like this and get really good results if the, my belt is moving, but if you're, if the bench or the floor is just way too low, you can do it against a wall or like I always say, a kitchen counter is perfect. Sometimes your bathroom counter is a little lower, so that might be a way to kind of grad graduate and try a little bit harder. So try those alternative methods if you really struggle with doing push-ups. And of course you could try them on your knees on the floor, that's another method, but this is a good way to kind of start challenging yourself. Okay, next we're going to do a squat. And when you stand up, I want you to thrust those hips forward. Similar to if you are doing a kettlebell swing, you squat back and then you thrust your hips forward. So I'm kind of preparing you for that motion. So just squat, thrust your hips forward. So when you stand up, it's really that you're going into straight full on posture. Sometimes people do squats and they kind of end up here. And so their hips are still kind of back. You want to stand all the way up and we're going to get into that good um, kind of glute squeeze right at the end of that squat. So sit back, stand up, squeeze those glutes. So it's a little bit of a um, stronger motion at the end than you normally would with a squat. You know, normally we'd stand up and come back. I really want to get that good glute squeeze at the end, just like if you were swinging a kettlebell. You kind of get a good glute squeeze right at the end. With your squats, importantly, if you want to and you're if you've done a kettlebell swing, you'd like to add that here, that's okay. You can go ahead and do that. Um, sitting back into your squat. Notice that I'm sitting back, my hips are going back. Um, the dis my knees are staying over my ankles. You know, they're bending forward just a little. There's a natural range of motion at your ankle. But I don't wanna be doing this. Lots of times, you know, kind of doing that hip tuck, weird. You really wanna sit those hips back Use those glutes, get a good glute squeeze right at the end. All right, good. Now we're going to grab our fit ball if you have one. If you don't, you can do it on the edge of your bench or a chair or um, all I'm gonna have you do is sit and we're gonna do some abs on the ball. Sometimes I call them reverse abs or ab leans. You're leaning backwards. So. Sit on top of the ball, maybe a little bit forward. I always kind of dig my heels into the ground. The other thing you can do is do this up against a wall if you have kind of a slippery floor. 
um, so that your feet are going to move out from under you and you have that confidence that you're not the ball. The ball's not going to move. Your feet aren't going to move. So start here um, with your hands on your knees and you're going to lean back. So you're just moving your hands up and down your thighs. This is if you've not done this before and you're not sure how to do it, but you're keeping your back nice and tall. You're thinking about, you know, when we're on the ground and we flatten our back to the floor, you want to think about that same motion to keep everything nice and strong here so that you're not dipping back with your shoulders. You don't want to get an aggravated curve to your spine here. You want to keep everything nice and strong and straight. So this is the next level, kind of putting your arms here on your shoulders, leaning back. Also, I'm not coming all the way up. When I come all the way up, my abs get a chance to relax. I don't want them to relax. I want to keep them engaged. We want to make them strong. So I'm coming up, but not quite all the way. So I'm keeping this strong. All right, now, if you need a little bit more challenge, keep going in whatever method you're challenged. You can put your hands above your head. And then you're, you're thinking about lifting your chest up to the ceiling, kind of, as you come up. Try to keep everything as straight and as strong as you had with all of those other methods. So try all of those variations. Pick the one that is a challenge to you, but you still feel safe. You still feel like your back is supported and you're really still getting a really good contraction here. If you're kind of on the edge, stick with one. Like this is a pretty good um, method here where if you, you're kind of on the edge of putting your hands here, you might not have quite strong enough core. Keeping your hands here and maybe doing a few more and slowing it down. So then you'll really get that good contraction in your abdominals. Okay, next we're going to use the same ball. I'm going to grab one dumbbell. And you remember last time we did those straight arm lat pulls? Well, today we're gonna to do triceps and I'm gonna have you do a bridge on the ball, which we've done in the past. So what you wanna do is walk out so your head and shoulders are resting comfortably on the ball. We're gonna press this weight straight over your head and this time you're bending your elbows. So we're doing, this is your, for your triceps, that muscle on the back of your arm that extends your arm. So this, this exercise is lovingly called skull crushers. So you have to be very careful and make sure you have a good grip on that, on that weight. But that's where you're aiming, is kind of straight down. Notice the only joint moving here are my elbows. So you're isolating your triceps. If you start bending your shoulders, then you're getting more lats and they're helping take over. But we did that last time. You don't need to do that this time. So just triceps straight overhead. Again, you want to go slowly both directions. You want to keep your elbows in line with that dumbbell. So you're keeping them tucked in nice and close. Nice and slowly both directions. And good. Okay, so then you can just bring it to your chest, walk yourself back up into a seated position. Okay, and again, if you don't have a ball, you can just do that with a bridge on the ground. We've done that before where you lie down, you lift your hips up off the ground, and then you can do it, or you can just do it lying flat on the ground too. There's a lot of different ways you can make that work if you don't have a fit ball. Okay, now we're going to grab, I'm going to grab a little bit lighter weight. And we're going to do some lateral raises. So I've got to raise my camera up just a little here. If you have your weights on the ground, make sure you use good form to pick them up. We're going to do lateral raises. Um, so grab probably a little bit lighter weight than you would for a bicep curl. And we're going to go out to the side, just lifting them and lowering them using those sh strong shoulder muscles. So if you have, I'm not bringing them straight out to the side. Many people um, have a little bit of shoulder pain bringing them straight out to the side. So what I do is I kind of compensate and I just bring them out to a diagonal. It's a little bit more natural motion for your arm. So also you're stopping before the height of your shoulder. This would be the height of my shoulder. 
And I don't, I don't want to go way up here. I can worry about impingement there, and I don't want to add, I don't want to add any injuries. I don't want to make any soreness here. Maybe a little muscle soreness, but no joint soreness. So maintain that good tandem stance, shoulders back, posture tall, looking straight across the room, nice and slowly, both directions. So there's different ways you can challenge your balance here. You can stand on balance discs if you have them. You can do a tandem stance if you want. You can try standing on one foot. Different ways to challenge your balance here. Two more. Nine and 10. Now, if you found that you chose too heavy of a weight, like I say, always press pause, go get a lighter weight. Those are harder. Um, it needs a little bit less weight. These are deltoids are not always super strong and they tend to fatigue really quickly. Okay, for the last one, I'm gonna have you do, um, grab that ball that we used the last time if you have one. If you don't, you can grab a tennis ball or anything really. What I'm gonna have you do um, for a little bit of a balance challenge today is we're gonna do a tandem stance, but what I want you to do is we're gonna step forward to and then back two. So we're working in a tandem line. Imagine if you were on a balance beam or if you have, you know, um, wood or tile, you can just follow one of those lines or you can just um, guess it, but um, heel to toe, tandem stance, heel to toe. And what I want you to do is just kind of play catch with that ball. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. So you're just going back and forth in that tandem stance, playing catch. Really try to stay heel to toe. You can add one more along it if you feel confident. When you go backwards, make sure you are, um, your space is clear of any other workout equipment. Like if that fit ball is rolling around, you don't wanna be worried about running into that or your dumbbells laying on the ground, make sure your, your space is clear. So if you do lose your balance and you step off to the side, you're not gonna step on something and hurt yourself. So work on it for about 30 seconds. You can kind of go, you know, two or three back and forth. And then if it feels pretty easy to you, you can start making lots of different changes with your ball. You know, you can throw it way up. The higher you throw it, the more challenging it is. And actually the smaller the ball you have, the more challenging it'll be too. So this bigger ball is a little bit easier than to say if I had a racquetball or a tennis ball or even a golf ball would be really challenging. So find, find something fun and play with it and challenge your balance. Okay. Now repeat these one to two more times, add a little cardio in between, and get a full workout. Make sure you stretch at the end. And as always, please message me if you need any uh, modifications to these exercises or if you have any questions or other ideas for me. All right, I'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody.